So, Star Station. In the top right, we do have We Wanna Win Clan Blob, the purple Protoss. And in the bottom right, we do have the orange Protoss Moby One of Knights Gaming, a fan favorite, no doubt. Yeah, Knights being the, um, the, the Dutch team that everyone knows. Yeah. So, but another PvP we have. Mm -mm -mm. So, we saw 3 Ghost Star Gate in that other one. We did. Versus three uh, versus a one gate expand into three gate robo. Uh, Which didn't end well. <laughs> it didn't really didn't end, end well, well, no, it really didn't. Um You know the the thing I like about PvP right now is that it's so diverse. There are yeah. so many uh variations of of openings you can be doing and so many ways of defending versus uh various types of builds. Uh, and you know you really have, unlike unlike before in Wings of Liber in Wings of Liberty, uh, right now in PvP you have to really make good reads. You have to re you really have to think about hmm, what could he be doing? Yeah, and th and that extra level of thought is kind of throwing some people off as they get used to the new game and getting used to the new units as well. But I find it's a little less rock paper scissory. Yep. Because you can hold off. If someone goes Stargate, you can hold it with Robo. You've just got to be clever about your positioning and how you micro and snipe off the air units with your Stalkers and kind of position them well. But the, the reason he lost that other game was because he, he went for a one gate expand versus an all in. And that's never going to end well. Uh, yep. I have to agree with that. Uh, and now we do see Blob not scouting ever and just playing really, really defensively, taking his second gas. And now he's sending out a probe. Well, if he doesn't scout his opponent on the first try, he's not going to scout him because by that time the Stalker will have been out. And yeah, uh, with the earlier, yeah, with the earlier gateway that uh, Moby One uh, got, as opposed to Blob. He's going to have that, even Chrono boosting it out, he's going to have that Stalker way before, uh, way before its normal timing, which usually is 4 minutes 20 seconds. So they are both going to go past each other, and with that probe scouting there, he should know to go diagonal, but no. <laughs> so, actually, I don't think either player is going to be able to scout. Because they're both scouting each other last, the Stalker from both players is going to be out in enough time to stop them. And when you see Zella and the Stalker, it's really not giving you much information on what's going on. Oh, Moby One's so smart. He saw the scouting pattern of the enemy probe and he's going after it. He's trying to intercept it. That's such a smart move. This protects you versus any kind of gateway timings. And we do see that Blob is going with a three gate opening. Uh, he's got his gateway timed out uh, very, very nicely so that uh, he will be able uh, to warp in units uh, straight directly when. Uh, when the gateway is finished. And uh, building a robo behind this. Oh, can he get yeah. this? No. Yeah, he can. He's, he's going to have three stalkers and a mothership core versus a stalker and a zealot and a mothership core. He just needs to make sure that mothership core doesn't get sniped. Oh, the probe, the probe. Another probe gets killed. Blob wanted to be aggressive, no. but it is not going to be ha uh, happening here. Time warps going down all across. Uh, this a uh, small battlefield and Moby One suddenly in a commanding position here, taking uh, taking care of all of uh, Blob's stalkers and pushing him back. Yeah, he is, but he did lose his own mothership core, which made it slightly harder for him. But he's got his proxy pollen going down to the base of the ramp. More stalkers coming out from Blob though, so he's going to be just fine. Got his three gate robo up, and it seems like it's going to be. 3k blink coming out of Moby One. Yeah, and that one was just a fake pylon, so... Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it, it's, it's even. Supplies are even. Uh, lost tab is even. Probe counts are fairly even. Unit counts are fairly even. It's just that Moby One lost his mothership call, which is going to really hurt, because the longer you have that, the more energy it gets. They can help out with time warps and... Uh, well, Blob, Blob, Blob lost his one, uh, his one as well. And uh, he is getting observers out right now, uh, just to be safe uh, versus DTs, and uh, most probably just scout his opponent out. Uh, Mobiwan, he's getting that 
blink as you mentioned and blob deciding that he will play this defensively getting an expansion out. yeah and yeah he has got his mother's ball ship call back out and uh, Stalker's in the mineral line, so he doesn't know if Stargate's coming, and mm. having an Oracle in your mineral line can really just end the game early. So, having a Stalker's there just in case. Sentry and Zealot guarding the ramp in case a push comes. Apparently there was a pause, but we don't get that because we're in the replay. Awesome. Beautiful. And, and Blob will not get to scout. He cannot scout with, uh, with his enemy's observer trailing his own. He has to either send another one or just wait for a hallucination, which he will not have because he doesn't have any sentries out. One only. And Ooh, doesn't uh, have 100 energy. Yeah, and those stalkers aren't going to get there in time to sub the observer. Blink almost done, so he's going to push in here and double Stargate play. This is possibly the worst response you could have to a Blink build. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. So, you know, even, even if uh, he gets one Void Ray. That will not do much. It will get sniped off faster than you could say blink. <coughs> yeah. And, uh, well, this expansion will die, no doubt. There is no doubt about it. There's just not enough units for Blob to defend this force. And uh, we have 11 Stalkers here. Some of the probes get killed as well. Nine of them going down so far. And a uh, nice force field there, but with blink, you know, that's yeah. not really an issue. He still hasn't shown it yet, though, which is kind of nice, because it, it kind of lets He's Blob hiding the blink. Yeah, which is really good. He doesn't need to show yet, and so he doesn't, and he will finally show it in the engagement. Still not showing it, I really like this. Because it just, it means the Blob just still doesn't have any good idea that this is coming in. Yeah, and he is getting that Void Ray, so... I mean, uh, he thinks, hey... Oh, now yeah, he, he sees, sees the, the blink. blink, now he sees yeah, the blink, he and he's like, there. okay, Void Ray is probably a bad idea here. The expansion yeah, goes down. I know. Expansion has gone down, but one Void Ray has come out, but working on the Immortal has one Immortal. And I don't know if he's going to hold, but he hasn't got his own expansion, his expansion got killed, and Mobi-1 just expanding behind this, because he has the map control, he has the presence, he can now expand and take up and get his economy going. Yep, and uh, basically Blob has to play this defensively right now, and just try to uh, try to get back into game with one huge counterattack. Now, one thing I would like to see from uh, from uh, Moby One would be just warping in a couple of sentries and just contain his opponent even more. And this also n protects you. Not only it protects you versus counterattacks, it also puts a lot of uh, pressure on uh, your opponent psychologically. Because suddenly he's like, oh my god, oh my god, he's getting ahead, he's getting ahead so fast, I cannot move out of my base, I have to move out, and he most probably will start making some mistakes. Yeah, it really puts the clock on the other player, puts the pressure on and tightens the screws, because they know they're on a limited amount of time, because two bases versus one base, is, it's not going to even be close about three minutes after the expansion is fully up and running. But yeah, three three immortals here and a void ray. That's that's got to be scary for any blink stalk army. Oh yeah, uh, it has. But uh, Moby One already transitioning out of this, uh, getting a stargate of his own. Now the problem is we have. Oh, he cancelled the one stargate. Nice move uh, by Blob when he saw that blink. So that stargate never finished. Uh, and you know this could be really interesting because uh, as soon as he gets his expansion up and running, Blob, that is, uh, he can actually even this out. Uh, and with sniping that observer, he feels pretty safe about uh, just uh, hugging the ramp. No need to have units in his expansion. And uh, well, two void rays are being made right now. One uh, for Blob and the other for Moby One. And considering that Blob is already one void ray ahead. If neither of these players miss Void Ray production, Blob is going to have the advantage, but his uh, gateway army will be smaller. Yes, that is true. Uh, but that Observer Snipe was really big because it meant that he could sit on his expansion and didn't have to go back and defend against any kind of backstabbing like this is, and that core snipe is pretty big. <laughs> In a battle of Void Ray Stalker versus Void Ray Stalker, I mean. Yes. Slow, slowing well. Blob down even more. The expansion finishes at 32... Well, well, he's down roughly about 10 probes, so... 
And we already have Templar Archives going down for uh, Moby One, so he will be defending versus Void Rays with Storm. That's a good call. If you don't split your Void Rays up, Storm can do tremendous amounts of damage and uh, put you way, way, way ahead in a fight. Not to mention, it can also be used versus ground armies, keeping your Stalkers safe. Uh, because anything closing in on the Stalkers would get stormed. Yep, it is really good as well, because Void Rays just seem to clump up more than any other air units, uh, unless you're paying attention and babysitting them. And it's also good for also ticking down the shields of the Immortals as well. It, it's not the primary focus, but if the Immortals are underneath the Void Rays, it just adds an extra little thing and ticks that shield down quite quickly. Yeah. So, actually, Blob adding a second Stargate, so he's going to really ramp up the Void Ray production, whereas Moby One going more for Air, air upgrades, getting that attack upgrade and trying to supplement it with a warp gate army instead. I think that's uh, that's a better choice, um, especially since he has the Templar Archives. Not getting Storm yet, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Um, maybe... No, he definitely does have the gas for it. Uh, and he also is getting a third expansion in a really smart place out of the vision of the Watchtower. Uh, so it is a little bit more secure in a sense that it is uh, less likely to be found. Hmm, it is definitely kind of... Because when it, when, a, when you expect someone to expand, you expect them to take this base, the shoulder base. But he, if he runs a probe in there and he sees nothing, he's like, oh, he must still be on two base, so I've got to stay on two base as well. But that ninja third is going to really help him out. Yeah, and Moby One is smart. Uh, he says every idea that I get, my opponent most probably gets as well. So he's using this probe to scout for ninja expansions himself. And uh, Blob tries to find out what he can with a hallucination right now. Moby One also getting a war prism. So <laughs> he's really ramping up uh, the harassment options for him. Maybe the war prism will be for reinforcement, but most likely it is going to be for a warp mm. inside the main base. And uh, Blob, he's getting ready to push Moby One back, so at the same time the war prism is his insurance policy. If you attack me, I will gut your economy, is what he's saying. Yeah, because he's, he's running off a lot of gateways, he's got five or six gateways here. So that means it's five or six zealots in this mineral line, he can't match that warp prism with just three. That is true. And there we go, taking a third on the standard place to take a third shoulder base. And uh, the more I look at this ball, the more I think Storm is just going to help so much because he's just stacking everything right on top of each other. Yeah, and uh, there we have it. Storm finally being researched. So this proxy pylon will go down. Blob finally finding it. Uh, but uh, still, behind in economy the whole game by about 10 harvesters all the time. Those are the 10 he lost when, when that expansion fell, by the way. So you can you can really kind of see how every little hit you do to your opponent compounds to a later game disadvantage for him. And uh, if we look at the Void Ray count, 9 versus 7, w Blob is ahead in uh, this regard. But overall the army supplies are the same, which means that uh, Moby One's ground army is a little bit uh, smaller, but look at the amount of immortals he's had. Uh, he's got. It's it's not so much um, it's not so much about how big your army is, but the unit composition. And if we look at that, yeah, this is perfectly suited to counter Void Rays. I mean, with the Archons, with Storm. With he's got and his air upgrades as well. I think the storm was just for this storm drop that's about uh, to come Blob's way. Just look at this. Uh, I would be surprised oh, God, if he. Yeah, uh, I would. I'd be really. Oh my God. Okay. No, it's only okay. it's only five. I thought there were far more stacked up there, but he's done a good yeah, job. Yeah, me of too. Uh, he would probably do better if he tra uh, went into the natural because the main has got to be mined out. Yeah, oh, that, and, that he, and he just sacrifices both the Archons and the War Prism for uh, four probes, was it? Yeah, four probes. And he just immediately takes the probes that were <laughs> mining the minerals and just puts them on. So not the best use of his time there. Blob looking at those Templar and going, gee, I should probably get Templar off my own. Still doesn't think he has a third because he keeps scouting. He's scouted all the potential third bases, hasn't scouted where it actually is. So he's still playing blind. Yeah, and uh, for all he knows, he's ahead. 
Yeah, and I think with this push coming up, you must think, okay, this is it. If I win this, then that's it. But there is a, there's just too many void rays here for Blob to handle. Let's see what the count is looking like. Fourteen versus nine. Okay, Blob has the void ray advantage. Uh, but Moby yeah. One also has 21 Stalkers with him and 6 Immortals compared to 5. And the Archons for Splash, Storms. Alright, here we go. The Prismatic Alignment has been people. activated a little bit faster on Moby One's side. Storms are going off on half the Void Rays are almost dead. All the Void Rays from Moby One are down. The Stalkers! Oh my god, the Stalkers from Moby One just disappeared. How did this happen? So yeah, we were talking earlier about the new Void Rays needed a bit of tweaking. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that was just... wow. It tanked all the storm damage and did fine. That was good job by Blob. He spread his army out well so the storms yeah. wouldn't do too much damage. The Archons died before they got to the Void Rays and he just turned this game on his head. Yeah, he really did. And uh, you know what? He's free to take a fourth base relatively quickly here. Yeah. So that's what happens. Uh, free Stargate production is kind of good. <laughs> it is. And now all Moby One can do is try to snipe off as many of these Void Rays as he can. It's going to be a tall order because there are quite a lot of them. And he says, silly, good game. Okay, so I was wrong. We Wanna Win takes the game one off of Moby One nonetheless.